Hello everyone, my name is Lente Prisper, you can call me Lente, and welcome to this video. In this video I want to show you a tool, a script that for World Painter that is, uh, can create very cool results, especially if you use it with uh, World Machine. It's very popular right now and um, well yeah, I just want to show you how cool it is and uh, discuss a few things about it and um, yeah, let's get started. So the name of the tool that I want to show is Color to Terrain, and it is a what it does. It basically takes a color image and it puts it on top of your map, um, chooses the most appropriate material from um, from like this menu, the most appropriate material or any custom values you put in, and then it applies it to your terrain. So that's kind of cool, um, and it's 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 a very neat way of colorizing terrain, especially with World Machine. Um, so let's look at World Machine for a second. This is one of the default maps that World Machine comes shipped with. Um, this is just an example map. Um, and what we have here is a nice mountain. We have some snow on top, which kind of looks bluish, but whatever. Um, we have some grass, dark grass, some shading, lighter grass. We have some brown, could even be a uh, mesa grass um, we have some brown which probably should be dirt or something and we have snow on top we have some stony areas so all in all we have a nice fair bit of variation in terms of colors that should really show um, the terrain of of uh, show the script of rather well we also have some shading on this side and we can turn the shading off but um, this will actually show you uh, one of the annoyances that I kind of have with the script, and it can be fixed, but, you know, uh, let's just keep it in for the purpose of this video, and, uh, you know, you can you can be smart about this yourself. Um, so let's switch back to World Painter, because I already exported the, the height map and the, um, and the uh, color map. So height map, let's import that, we don't need any water, um, and actually, I'm not going to explain anything about World Machine, because, well, you know, if you want to use this, you should probably already know. Actually, going to remove frost, and this is sort of a standard import. We have some snow on top, some stone, some dirt, and some grass. And there we have it. It's the mountain that we saw in World Machine, but it doesn't have any of the fancy coloring. For that, we will use the script. Um, first off, if you Google color to terrain, the top page will be the github page for the script there will also be a link in the description but yeah there you can find it you can also find all the details about how you uh, probably install it and how you use it and you know read it pay attention to it because there might be some neat things in there for your particular project that i'm not covering um so you install the script by clicking on tools open plugins folder and you put the script in here as the javascript file that it is um, and then you probably need to restart World Painter, but I honestly don't even know anymore. Um, because I've had it for a while. Um, then to run it, maybe you need to start up uh, World Painter again, not sure. Go to the Tools menu again. Um, this time click on Run Scripts, and then we open this uh, drop down of this menu. You maybe need to select the script itself, but it's already pre selected for me because I've used it before and uh, we need to tell the script where to find the image um, and I've just used this folder structure and I named it overlay.png um, overlay.png and let's run this script now this is a one and a half K map and it probably takes like 20 seconds to um, put on the colors um, I don't know exactly also depends on probably how powerful your machine is for me this roughly takes 20 seconds but for you it might be very different um, it uses all the standard blocks that you have in the terrain menu so we see here a list of things that it uses uh, mycelium and stone red sandstone granite diorite all the clays are mentioned above here uh, dirt potsel sand red sand just all the blocks that we have in the terrain menu all of those are used so this, that's a good thing to be aware about. Now the script finished, so I closed the window and here we can look at the uh, mountain. 
let's show the 3D view. Now this looks like it's colored quite cool, right? We have some darker shades, some light shades. Um, if we turn this around, we can kind of see an ish, well, an annoyance that the script, ha script has because it will just pick the most appropriate color. So in this case, apparently it is purple, purple clay is the best matching color for sort of the bluish shade ice on top which is well if, if we go in game and look at it okay uh, as players this doesn't make any sense but I guess if you purely look at it from the shade of the color it might be the best fitting block um, because that's what the script picks so it's kind of annoying in a way uh, you need to do some post editing to fix all of this up need to replace all these materials if you wanted to. The reason that I think this kind of is a cool effect is because this site just has a slightly different um, colorization. So I think that will make the train extra dynamic to have some shading um, on top of that. Just changing the box a bit. That is can really screw up your map, but it can work out great. So I don't know. Use your own best judgment what you want to use or if you don't want to use that. Um, but it does illustrate an issue, and that's just what, something that I wanted to show you. Um, let's export this map real quick, and that was actually the wrong block. So let's export this map, It'll take a second, and look at this in-game. Because this dark green, that's actually green clay, and this lighter green, that's actually lime clay. It's not great either, but um, let's look at it in-game. When we look at stuff in-game, I'm now on top of the mountain. On the Here we have our purple. Um, let's set it today. Here we have our purple clay, which I'm not a fan of. Uh, looks looks bad. Looks really bad. Um, but yeah, we can definitely see what the script was doing. What was uh, the, the shading... If you just look at this and reason the logic behind it, um, this is spot on. That's why the script it the script isn't perfect, but it does perfectly what it says it does, um, and that that is where you need to take it from uh, and use your own intelligence to actually perfect it, because you know this grass, all this green stuff should probably be grass. So if we were were to use I think it's best to use the global operations to turn this grass into, for example, a forest biome to apply a desert biome on top of this lime grass and apply a roofed forest on this green green clay and then replace all the clay materials for grass. That will, that will get a nice shading and similarly you need to change probably all the cobblestones and the gravel um, on top of here there's soul sand I'm not a fan of soul sand for this particular purpose like to me it's more of a mud a deposition material and not a um, actually a hill material itself that should be um, dirt because dirt is not as soggy to walk on um, so I definitely do use soul sand in my terrains, but I don't think it should be on a mountainside. Um, so that's are some considerations. Um, now, there's one really cool thing that it does. Um, this is a render that I made. I did some preparation for the video. This is a render, um, and at this, I'm not sure how you're going to watch this. On a mobile, this might already look absolutely really beautiful with all, my, all the color blending or whatever. But if I use, if I look at this full screen and drag the window really small, so I get all the shade, all the colors blend together, they're just blurred and compressed. This looks really, really accurate, super accurate actually, and that is how you get a really cool render um, by creating the sense of distance really far. To put the scene very far away from the camera which is something that we do often with terrain renders um, and you can get like especially the r the really cheaty thing about this is um, that i used um, solid block color 
option in Chunky to render this, which is extra cheaty because it will ignore all the in-block texture. It will just reduce it to its uh, to one color, which is exactly what script does. So this way of rendering in Chunky and the thing that the script do like match one on one with each other, and you get this perfect looking stuff. Um, but yeah, the cheaty thing about this is if you just put a camera very far away from the scene, use this one texture block, it will look absolutely stunning in Chunky, and it will be absolutely shit in game. And I think ultimately, Minecraft terrain isn't about pretty renders, it is about the terrain in game, the, the how, how interesting it is to play on. Um, and so, you know, I think this is kind of sort of, this is a method of window dressing and that is a side of terraforming that I don't like. The, the window dressing, the, sh the showing stuff, uh, pretending it is more than it actually is. Um, that same goes for people who, um, show the world machine view. Okay, it might look perfect in world machine, but that's not how it looks in Minecraft. That's something that I'm personally annoyed about. Um, and I fully understand why people do that. Because I would rather look at this than look at Minecraft terrain. Let's be honest. I I share that opinion. But I think it's about Minecraft terrain. And not about the pretty renders. Um, but they are really pretty. Let's be real. Uh, so if you were to win this for... Um, if, you, if you want to make pretty renders. And become a world famous... Minecraft Terraformer, then you should probably make really pretty renders. Nobody cares about the terrain. Let's be honest. We're we're not in this to make uh, useful terrain in game. We're in this to make renders. Um, so now I also said about that this lime clay should probably be grass, and you can just use um, the global operations for that. I don't, I don't think I have to show that, right? Um, there are different shades of um, of materials. If you apply different biomes to grass, you get different shades. Um, this is a um, image that was shared by um, Barbarian um, Terraformer. I think he's called himself uh, Isaac now. Or sorry, sorry, Barbarian. If I <laughs> sorry, um, but in he 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 shared this image, and this is just a cor what biome. Um, achieves which color um, and forest isn't on this list which is <laughs> which is kind of annoying because forest is one of the main biomes but we have desert savanna and nether it's, it's it okay this image maybe not complete but it does illustrate what we are on about um, so you know it is it is a really cool tool it is a it is a tool um, and I don't use this tool myself because I've been used for the last probably two years. I've been using the World Painter API. Um, and if you want to make really large terrains, that you know, my me the method that I use is completely different because I look at my terrains, the the things that I make in World Machine, as a long term investment sort of deal um, that I can reuse and build further upon. Um, so I don't colorize stuff the same way i don't work with colors inside of world machine um, i have a macro to translate binary layers into materials um that's a whole different video if people want if, if you want to see that it's not relevant to most of you but you know if you want to i can show it it's just a different way to skin the cat that's a saying right skin a cat well this is a different method. <laughs> um, and yeah. This uh, script is uh, pretty cool. You should use it. Try it out. You can. Another cool thing to do is just to paint a terrain. Um, and put on Google some fractal images. You can get some really crazy results. By just applying a random fractal image to a random area on the map. It's, it's pretty cool that way. Um. Yeah, that's that's all about the um, all about the script. I want to say, do look at the uh, instructions that come with the tool um, on on the GitHub. 
because this this video didn't cover everything but i think it covered the most important stuff if you want to see more videos let me know down in below in the comments and if you don't well you can unsubscribe i guess or not that's up to you um yeah have a nice day bye